back to our original presentation where we are now about to discuss what are the examples of products of oceanic oceanic convergence okay so examples of island arcs or examples of volcanic island arcs are these first we have the indonesian archipelago second we have the philippine island arc or the philippines itself and we have the japan or the japanese island arc okay so as you can see in this picture we have drawn uh, red lines across the map which shows the different island arcs and other island arcs that you can see on the map okay so the indonesian archipelago is a product of the convergence of the australian plate and the sunda plate which are both oceanic plates so remember that a plate can be both continental or oceanic so it can be a combination so these parts of the australian plate which is oceanic and the sunda plate which is the uh, part of the eurasian plate the lower part of the eurasian plate which is also oceanic they converge to form the indonesian archipelago at the same time for the philippine island arc or the philippines it is a product of the convergence between the philippine plate so we know that we have the uh, philippine sea plate it is a minor plate and the sunda plate as well which is here the philippine plate and the sunda plate and then finally um the japan or the japanese island arc um, is a product of the convergence of the pacific plate and the part of eurasian plate so let's move now to the next type of convergent boundaries the next type is oceanic continental convergence still here in this type of convergent boundary we still have subduction and obviously the denser oceanic plate would undergo the process also the geologic process or feature that you can have in this type of convergence are almost the same with the previous type which we have discussed a while ago oh here we still have a trench we still have an earthquake but then we will now have a continental volcanic arc however again as what i have stressed a while ago the continental volcanic arc is called volcanic island arc in your module so don't be confused about it i'm using another term here to distinguish it from the island arc so there we also have this um, image from your module so hawig na hawig lang talaga yung dalawa ang kaibahan lang talaga is the type of crust that or type of lithospheres that are involved in the convergence o diba parehas lang halos so again at uh, the point where the two lithospheres meet would become a trench and then you have this subducting denser oceanic lithosphere and after some time it would melt and become a volcanic arc so the volcanic arc is still a set of volcanoes not a single volcano but a group of volcanoes and so i have here a more complex picture of continental oceanic convergence by the way you can call it oceanic continental or continental oceanic parehas lang naman sila so it's not really an issue yeah and so let's move on with the simulation again so we will be placing the crust here by the way it doesn't matter if you choose old or young here as long as it's oceanic crust and we have the continental crust and both 
show labels, show seawater. So, may kita natin dito na yung parang cambio niya, automatic na lumabas dito kasi it's always the oceanic crust that would go under the continental crust. It can't be possible that the continental crust would go under the oceanic crust because again, oceanic crust is denser than continental crust. The denser lithosphere would undergo subduction. Don't forget that. Again, automatic mode po tayo. And then, time elapsed in millions of years. Let's see what happens. Again, this process of going down beneath the other crust is called subduction. So, after some time, it would melt and would form the arcs here. That's 40 million years. Again, this is not possible overnight. It would take millions of years. And it stopped at 50 million years. So, sabi ko nga kanina, it's very similar to oceanic-oceanic convergence. So, here we have a trench. And then we have the continental volcanic arcs. So, again, no, before we proceed with the last part or the last type of convergence, I would like to reiterate um, that in this particular presentation, I indicated the terms volcanic island arc or island arc for oceanic-oceanic convergence and continental volcanic arcs for oceanic continental convergence. However, in your module, um, this two since they are similar to each other, they are both called volcanic island arcs. So, hindi naman siguro magiging problem kasi um, they are similar to each other. They are chains of volcanoes. Ang medyo kaibahan lang is yung type of lithosphere kung saan sila nabuo. Okay, so let's move now to the different examples of this volcanic arcs or continental volcanic arcs. So first we have the Rockies or the Rocky Mountains which is found in North America. So the Rocky Mountains or the Rockies is a product of the convergence of the North American plate and the Juan de Fuca or the Pacific plate. So, may kita natin dito that the Rocky Mountains is somehow situated here kasi medyo matagal na daw yan na nabuo, kaya medyo gumit na na siya. Siguro natanungin nyo ako, ma'am, bakit po sabi nyo po um, volcanoes yon pero mountains po yung example ninyo. Iba nga, yung mga mountains, they might be volcanoes in the past but then they became inactive because there is uh, less and less source of magma below them because of movement of the earth and so on and so forth so these mountains were once volcanoes but then due to passing of time they just became mountains so next we also have the cascades and sierra nevadas so these are near the rockies still in the north american plate so the cascades is um, the product of the convergence of Juan de Fuca Plate and North America, while the Sierra Nevadas, which is found below the Cascades, is the product of the convergence of the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. We also have the Andes Mountains. So the Andes Mountains can be found in the South Americas. This is a product of the convergence of the Nazca Plate and the South American Plate. 
So, kung babalikan natin, no, kanina, um, we have mentioned Juan de Fuca and we mentioned Pacific Plate. So, Juan de Fuca and Pacific Plate are oceanic plates. They converge with the continental plate, which is North America. And in this case, we also have Nazca Plate, which is a, an oceanic plate, which converged with the South American Plate, which is continental. Thus, making them examples of oceanic continental convergence. Finally, we will go to the last part of this discussion, which is all about the continental continental convergence. As the title implies, continental continental convergence is the convergence between two continental plates. Now, because the two plates that are moving towards each other are both continental, which are less dense compared to an oceanic plate, Therefore, no subduction happens. Wala nang papailalim. So, pag nag-meet sila, they will just collide and form something in between. What are the geologic processes that occur? We have mountain ranges and earthquakes. So, as you can see, we have here the picture as illustrated in your module. Let's go back to the simulation. We place two continental crusts. And then we will be observing what happens. Again, there's no subduction here, only collision. Okay, so the timer stopped at 35 million years. O medyo mas mabilis makabuo ng bundok kaysa dun sa naunang dalawang examples natin which are the volcanic island arcs. And also, um, again, there's no subduction. And not only one mountain is formed. We have a series or a group of mountains or mountain ranges. So as for the best example of a continental continental convergence, we have the Himalayas. So the Himalayas was formed from the convergence of the Indian plate to the Eurasian plate. So the Himalayas um, include the very well-known Mount Everest which is the tallest mountain or the highest mountain on earth. And apparently, according to scientists, um, years ago or millions of years ago, India and Asia were not together. So, mapapansin natin sa ma mapa natin ngayon, India is a part of Asia. But then, according to scientists, India was here. So, nakahiwalay si India 71 million years ago. And then, because of the movements of these plates, it slowly moved towards the Eurasian plate until, okay, until the Himalayas was formed. Because India is continental, uh, Eurasia, part of the Eurasia, majority of it is also continental. So, before we end this discussion, let's have a short recap of what we have discussed today. First, uh, we have uh, discussed what a convergent boundary is. A convergent plate boundary is a plate boundary where um, two plates are moving towards each other. And then, we also have three types of convergent plate boundaries. First, the oceanic-oceanic. Second, the oceanic-continental. And third, the continental 
continental convergence or convergent boundary. Now, as for the difference among the three, so an oceanic oceanic convergence would produce a volcanic island arc and a trench. An oceanic continental convergence could produce a continental volcanic arc and a trench. And finally, for a continental continental convergence, a mountain range would be formed. So for all of these types of convergence or convergent plate boundaries, any type of movement would cause an earthquake. So we also have discussed the examples of the outcomes of these different types of convergence. Or you can just uh, rewind this video if you have forgotten about them. And so that's all for today. If you have questions, uh, you can simply write them on the comment box below. And I hope that this video was able to help you understand more the contents of module number five so that's all for today till our next discussion bye